So when you see these mycorrhizal fungi products that market unlocking phosphorus, uh, is that really what they're doing? Is it is it just an extension of the root zone, and that's how they're accessing that phosphorus? That's right. And so, um, and, and that's a little bit of a misnomer. Our muscular mycorrhizal fungi to unlock phosphorus. Typically, you're talking about a bound source of phosphorus, and you're transforming that from a plant unavailable form to a plant available form. That would that's what I would call unlocking phosphorus. But you know, let's not get into semantics here. What I would say is our muscular mycorrhizae are not very enzymatically capable. So they're not doing a lot of the unlocking. They're more like scavengers. They're kind of like the hyena of the of the particular fungal kingdom. They they're able to infect the plant root. They have a a, a trans a transfer location within that plant root within the cortical cells. They they develop these vesicle arbuscular sites, and then they extend out. And, and to be honest with you, bacteria are much more enzymatically capable to liberate phosphorus in these micronutrients. And so the fungi can grow and, you know, they cohabitate. There's, you know, tens of thousands of bacterial and different fungi within, you know, very, very small, uh, even grams of soil. And so these fungi can go and as they sense phosphate that's in a bioavailable or soluble form, they can suck it up very competently. And then they translocate it. They keep some of it for themselves and they translocate quite a bit of it to the to the plant because they like that sugar the plant feeds them. So they are they're scavenging phosphorus and you can consider that unlocking phosphorus or grabbing it from the soil the plant didn't have it so they are through that sense but but they that's that's something that's a little bit of a misconception they're not necessarily liberating they're capturing something that's already been liberated and, and I'll say something else about phosphorus that's, or uh, mycorrhizae that's a little bit of a, a misconception. And there's a great study. So go look at some of these papers. We can probably provide some in the, in the links or, you know, it's, it's uh, publicly inf- uh, available information. The higher the phosphorus availability for plant, the lower the infection success rate is for mycorrhizal fungi. So if phosphorus is available... The plants don't let them in as easy is what that comes down to, which I think it, it really speaks to the to the environmental sensitivity of the plant. The plant doesn't have to give up that carbon if it doesn't want to. And if it's getting what it needs from that particular microbial function, it won't let them in. And so the infection rate uh, of mycorrhizal fungi in a high phosphorus environment is much less than the infection rate of mycorrhizal fungi to a plant in a very low phosphorus environment where the plant actually needs that symbiotic relationship. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, I thought with unlocking phosphorus that it was actually like the fungi was doing some sort of nutrient cycling and then uh, and then turning it from an unavailable form to an available form. But that's funny, that's just an extension of it and just kind of grabbing it where the roots really can't grab it. Yeah, yeah. Look, there's other microbial f- fungal groups and obviously bacteria that do a great job of that. And that's why, you know, they coexist, but they wouldn't be as competent if they didn't have the other microbial uh, c- contributions within that in, in that soil environment to be able to scavenge that phosphorus. This clip was brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrowit15 to save on any of their gardening products.